Good morning, folks. Today we're going to see the sun start some flaring. We've got looks at the sun and earth. Space science has a new weapon, and there is an ominous event at the top of the sky. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun with focus top right at the departing active region and its pops. The area surrounding the coronal holes on the left is much calmer, but that developing region has indeed begun its flare and eruption phase. Two C-class flares thus far, and the rise to sunspot maximum surges onward. Earth is not in danger from these eruptions, and that becomes more true as it turns further away to the far side. And these were about 10 times weaker than what can deliver scientifically relevant CMEs, 100 times weaker than what we begin to worry about, and 1,000 times weaker than the solar kill shot. Let's begin the science articles with the foundations of the food chain. As we've seen with chlorophyll, phytoplankton, and krill, multiple times each, the changing earth is not killing them all, but they are thriving, doing what all creatures do when there's more food around and more heat for growing and flourishing seasons above and below the surface of the water. Stepping to the world's number one climate journal for another dose of natural variability where anthropogenic warming has dominated the models for decades extra necessary when the rise up in temperatures began well before industrial society in the 1700s. Big kudos to the discovery of not only grand solar minimum cycle modulation in the gypsum deltas, but the Haustat cycle as well. The Haustat cycle is the 1,000 to 2,000 year cycle which feeds up to set the clock on the super flares of the sun, which if you recall, are on the 3,000 and 6,000 year harmonics just one higher to get to the 12,000 year harmonic for the biggest of all solar blasts, but for now, again, impressive identification of both of those patterns here. Folks, we have entered a new era in astronomy. Not as though Chandra and New Star and Newton haven't given us X-ray views before, but with the new Erosita work, the cosmic secrets are left with far fewer places to hide. The first science release from Erosita and the images are amazing. One in particular of the Large Magellanic Cloud here, centered on Supernova 1987A, contains a variety of energy returns to the point where you can see there's plasma permeating the medium. But by far the coolest image released yet is part of this at the bottom where we see the brightest X-ray source in the LMC, the X1 source, with what appears to be emitting loops where the plasma is accelerated. Last but not least, folks, the first ever detection of an electric hurricane at the top of the sky. This is not some brand new surge in technological capability. This is the changing Earth displaying a vulnerability she didn't have before, and a new face. Driven by Earth's geoelectric and geomagnetic systems, and in concert with the solar wind and space energy, this hurricane at the polar region, at the top of the sky, where that solar energy and polar cusp like to favor the particle surges to our planet, is just the beginning. It's lucky we went over the lightning anomalies recently so that these energetic anomalies higher up sit well in the list. And with the sun waking up for solar maximum now, remember, the best of all ways to test how Earth's magnetic field is doing or how far along in its shift it's gone is to see if small to mid-level space weather events begin to have strong to major effects on our planet. In the 12,000 year game of catastrophism, get ready for the playoffs. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.